Hi, I'm Joe Carswell of Teach Construction. This lesson is all about a very important but often overlooked skill, that's marking. So let's get right into it. To build well, we need to be able to mark well. It's not enough to just be able to measure accurately. If you can't make a mark at a specific line on that tape measure and then transfer that line, make a cut, then you can't build well. So this starts with knowing our marking tools and knowing how to use them. We have a lot of choices. I'm going to start with our go-to, that's pencils. This is a carpenter's pencil. It's a flat pencil with a really broad core. Uh, it won't roll away because it's not round and it's very durable. These are a little more difficult to keep sharp than say some other pencils, but if you're doing rough carpentry, this one can get the job done. The challenge with a carpenter's pencil is that it makes broad or thicker lines than some of the other pencils. And that's sort of a typical width for a carpenter's pencil. Of course, if you spend a lot of time keeping it sharp, you might be able to get it a little thinner. The next one up is our jumbo pencil. This is thicker than a regular pencil. It fits nicely in your hand and it has some of that durability that our carpenter pencil does, but you can get a little finer point on it than you can on the carpenter's pencil. I think it's because it's round. So we'll make a mark with that one. And you see that our line is getting a little thinner as we go. So we can improve our accuracy or make a finer line with this pencil. Then of course we have our number two. This is our standard. We learned about this one from school. Not as durable as these other two options. The lead gets thinner, the pencil gets thinner. So it, that translates to a more fragile instrument, but it gives us a finer line and we can sharpen this point much smaller than the other ones. If you want the ultimate in fine lines, use a mechanical pencil. And this one has leads in it that are insertable. And sharpening this pencil is as easy as pressing this button. It extends the lead out. So that is an easy maintenance on this pencil. This one makes very fine lines and very consistently fine lines. So when you draw it in, you get one of the best quality lines of all of the different pencils. If you need visibility in a marking tool, you might use a lumber crayon. And these aren't just for lumber. They can mark on other materials like concrete as well. They're not that great for making guidelines, especially when the tip is so difficult like this one is to sharpen. They're wax based and they tend to show up on materials. Say you needed to mark a lot of crowns on a pile of studs that were going to end up in a wall assembly. You can uh, draw that in there and that's very visible to you or someone else that might assemble that wall later. These come in different colors. Here is a blue version that's even more visible. These are very permanent and they'll even mark on difficult surfaces like wet surfaces. Here is a marker that is sort of a lumber crayon, but in a carpenter pencil form. So now we get more accuracy of our line. We can make guidelines with this one and I'll draw one in. Now we get a line that's as good as our carpenter's pencil, but now we get that color or that visibility that we had with our lumber crayon. If you need real visibility, you go with a permanent marker and these are solvent-based ink markers with felt tips. Everybody knows about a Sharpie. This is a Milwaukee brand that's supposed to mark everything. And these make a very visible line, but they don't make a very fine line. The ink in these tends to soak in and spread out on porous materials. And that is about the thickness of line that you get, which is twice as thick as some of the heaviest pencil lines we have. Of course, these, when they start off new, have a much finer point, and as you use them, especially on textured surfaces, they tend to dull out. This one is somewhere between brand new and worn out. Of course, when they get too worn out, they're just no good, so there's no sharpening or maintaining these. When it comes to these thicker lines, you might be able to get away with it in rough framing, but when it comes to detail work like finished carpentry, say baseboards or other trim, this is just too thick to get an accurate line. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students 
teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. Just like all of our other hand tools, we need to maintain our marking tools. That means sharpening them. We have specific things that we can sharpen them with. That's our handheld sharpener. This is a sharpener that actually chucks in a drill. That's pretty cool. I find that these take away too much pencil too quickly when you're using them. I like to use just a utility knife. I've always got it in my bag and it's ready to go. It doesn't take that long to sharpen a pencil and there's a specific way to do it to make it easy and to do it well. And that is holding the pencil in one hand and then holding your blade in the other hand. And instead of using this hand to make your cuts, actually it's more like shaving it, you'll put the blade at an angle and then push it with your thumb away from the tip and kind of spin the pencil as you're going. And it's just taking off a little material just enough to get that fine point at the end. So that's enough about our marking tools. Let's put these tools to use starting with a crow's foot. This is a great method to get a very accurate mark at whatever tape measure distance that you want. I'm going to make a mark at 14 inches. So I will start my pencil right at that 14 inch mark and I'm going to make two marks, basically one starting there working away and then doing another one in the other direction. So when I take my tape measure away, what I have here is basically an arrow that was pointing to my 14 inches. When I bring in my speed square, I'll have my pencil right at, at that point of that arrow. And when I bring my speed square into it, when I make my guideline, draw it in, it lands right there at that point. I know that's the same point that was 14 inches on my tape measure. This is the most accurate way to set this up. So I'm not done yet here. Before I go to cut, I would make an X on my scrap side of this board. Remember, we were measuring 14 inches here. This is the piece that I want to keep. I need something to remind me of what my scrap side is. That's where I want my blade to land on this side of the line. So I'll draw an X. It never fails. You start walking to the saw, you get to the saw and you forget which was your good piece and which was your scrap. And X is an easy way to avoid that confusion. You may have noticed I used an angle on my pencil up against this speed square when I drew my guideline. That was on purpose. And we want about a 45 degree angle to bring the point of this pencil in very tight to that straight edge. If we were to run it more vertically, then we're going to push that lead of that pencil away from that mark. So we get a real inaccurate measurement or guideline that we then cut to and we end up with a bad mess at the end. The last tip for marking I have for you is about this guy, your eraser. And my advice is don't use it. It's not a very effective thing to do to try to erase, especially on lumber. It doesn't work well, takes a long time. It's much easier if this line's a mistake to just scratch it out and then make your correct line. So when I go to a saw, if I'm trying to decide which is my correct line, it's very obvious to me to pick this one. We've been talking a lot about marking on wood. We have other materials that we need to mark as well. So say we have a piece of PVC pipe. This is a uh, glossy plastic. So let's try a pencil on here and we can get a fairly decent mark on this. It's white, the pencil is kind of dark, so that works. We can also go to our colored pencil. That makes a decent mark. And of course, our permanent marker works really well, but now we have a pretty thick line. Typically with plumbing, any of these would be fine. It just becomes your preference. If we move to another plumbing material, this one's even more slippery. So we start with our pencil, not quite as good. I don't know if you can see that mark. Our red pencil here is certainly not going to work on a red material. So we go to our permanent marker and obviously that's the best choice if you try your uh, ballpoint pen. Once again, this one kind of holds up in this situation. Let's go to a really challenging material and that's this steel stud. So this is sort of a gray, silver gray color. It's very slippery and almost greasy because it's galvanized. So if I mark on this with a pencil, sure I can see it, not that great or visible of a mark. If I go to my uh, red 
crayon, still not that great. This tool doesn't work that well. So the one that I know is going to work is my permanent marker. No problem here. And I can make a series of marks very visible. OSB is another common material we're going to have to make marks on. And the problem with OSB is that there's a lot of noise going on here. A lot of contrast, a lot of darks, and a lot of lights. So we can use a pencil on this material and it will show up okay. If we switch to a color, say our lumber crayon, it's much better. The contrast makes it visible. And of course, the permanent marker always shines when it comes to visibility. Of course, we need to consider the fineness of the line uh, when we're marking as well. Typically, we would be using OSB in rough framing stage, so this tool would work fine. So there you have it, some tools and techniques for good marking. I hope by now you understand it's not just about measuring, it's also about making good marks. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.